six of this podcast series looks into Section 82 reports. When a court orders a Section 82 report, it is the responsibility of the NGOs to prepare. Let's hear what Judge Johnston has to say about this section of the CARE Act and what it means for caseworkers working in out-of-home care in New South Wales. Could you please share with our listeners why it is crucial to receive a Section 82 report on time and what the consequences are if it's not done on time? Well, the reason that the court and the parties commonly require the provision of a Section 82 report, usually within nine or some longer period after the final orders, is to satisfy itself that the placement is in fact working satisfactorily as envisaged, or that other issues identified in relation to the child are being appropriately addressed, such as, say, some therapeutic need that the child might need or might have needed. While the court understands that such reports will in the future be prepared by NGOs, it's important to understand that the department can't delegate its primary responsibility for complying with the court order requiring those reports because it's the secretary of the department that is the party, not the NGO. Thus, as one children's magistrate recently made clear, it's not good enough just to send a Section 82 report to the court without an express adoption or approval of the report on behalf of the secretary. Non-compliance with an order for a Section 82 report, including lateness in providing the report, uh, providing the report is in fact a breach of the court's order, which is prima facie contempt of court. So that is for the NGOs, then that would be they would be. Well, the the secretary would be in contempt of court, and I don't think the the uh, secretary would be very happy with the NGO putting them in contempt. So it's a bit of a tricky situation. Isn't it? Yeah, what's important for everybody to understand is that the Section 82 requirement is an order of the court. It's not an administrative process. It's a legal process, and it, and it's important to comply with it in a timely way. What are the views of the court on releasing Section 82 reports to carers who are not a party to the matter? I think traditionally um, magistrates have been reluctant to release Section 82 reports other than to the parties. I'm trying to change that culture and to encourage a wider distribution of the Section 82 report. It still remains a matter of discretion for the individual judicial officer, but as a matter of policy, I support the distribution of the report to all interested parties, including the NGO, and to the carers or others with ongoing care responsibilities in the interests of, of transparency and uh, information exchange. Sometimes, however, it might be wise for the report to be redacted if there's sensitive material or other information in it, such as addresses, names of carers, medical practitioners and the like. We had a case recently where the carers were most upset that their address was disclosed in the Section 82 report and given the report was given to the father who threatened violence against the carers and now he knew their address. That brings us to the end of Section 82 reports. Check out part 7 in this series if you would like to learn about report and affidavit writing and record keeping.